welcome back to the video. In this video, we are going to study the topic pollen grains. In our previous video, we studied about the development of anther, the development of pollen grains and microsporogenesis. So let us begin with the chapter. Now, the question arises, what pollen grains are? The pollen grains represents the male gametophyte. If you touch the open anthers of hibiscus or any other flower, you would like you would find deposition of yellowish powdery pollen grains on your fingers. If you look at this picture, electron micrographs are given, which is showing different shapes and sizes of pollen grains. Here is the diagram of a typical tetrad. Coming to the note, the first point says that pollen grains vary in shapes. So it is generally round with the size of 25 to 30 micrometers. Pollen grains has haploid unicellular body with single nucleus. It has two layers. The outer layer will be known as exine and the inner layer or the inner wall will be known as the intine. Wall or sporoderm. Please mark it down. Wall or sporoderm. So in place of the term wall, we can use the term sporoderm. Consists of two layers. The outer layer is thick and as I told you, it is called exine. The inner layer is thin or the inner wall is thin and it is called in time. Talking more about exine, it is thick and sculptured or smooth. It is cuticularized and cutin is of special type called sporopollenin. Okay, so basically it has got a coating of sporopollenin which helps in resisting itself from different chemicals and biological decompositions. So a question is that pollen grains are in adverse condition. Mein kaise survive karte? So since their outer wall has got a special coat of sporopollenin, so it will help in conditions mein resist karne mein help resist. This preserves the pollen wall for longer periods. It also possesses proteins for enzymatic and compatibility reaction understood pollen grains contain regions of pores or furrows so with this diagram you will understand it more clearly it's written that pollen grain contains regions of pores or furrows so basically the porous wall which you will see are known as you can call them furrows now in these region exine is absent yahan pe bol raha hai ki aapka jo pura outer layer hai exine wo complete nahi hai wo jagah jagah par absent hai to un jagah jagah par chote chote holes ya pores ban jate hain jinhe hum furrows kehte hain theek hai when the areas are circular they are called germ pores theek hai to pores basically bolenge to ye sare aapke germ pores ho rahe hain aur jab ye area elongated rehta hai that means center se shuru hokar bahar wall tak rehta hai unko hum kehte hain germ furrows understood to jo chote chote pores hote hain unhe hum sirf germ pores aur jo elongated rehte hain unhe hum जर्म परोस कहते हैं तो इस डायग्राम में आप देखोगे ये पार्ट हो गया आपका जर्म परो का वेर एज जर्म पोस आपको दिखेंगे छोटे छोटे एरियाज हैं जहां जहां पे आपका एग्जाइन वॉल है द ब्राउन वॉल दैट इज एब्सेंट इन द हाइलाइटेड पोर्शन सो दीज आर नोन एज जर्म पोर्स understood now talking about इंटाइन इंटाइन इज थिन एंड इलास्ट इट इज मेड अप ऑफ सेल्यूलोज एंड पेक्टीन सो प्लीज मार्क इट cellulose and pectin whereas exine was made up of poropollenin mark it during pollen germination it is the intine that extends out from the pollen tube this is a very important line when pollen germination occurs this intine comes out and forms pollen tube okay and that pollen tube reaches the ovary and the male gamete fuses with the female gamete the cytoplasm of the pollen grains are rich in starch and unsaturated oils they are initially uninucleate and later becomes two to three cells so in the beginning the pollen grains will have single nucleus and later on after differentiation they can be of two to three cells the pollen of each anther lobe forms a characteristic mass called pollonium so over here this point says that pollen grains can be monoclopate having one germ pore biclopate or triclopate so this diagram you can easily observe that the exine is absent in three places so it is having three germ pores that therefore we will call this a triclopate pollen the branch of study of pollens is called palynology so please mark it now coming to the topic development of the male gametophyte that means developing of the pollen grain further now what happens the nuclear increases in size inside the pollen grain it divides mitotically to produce two unequal daughter cells the first will be the vegetative cell and the second will be the generative cell clear so you can see clearly in this diagram that the vegetative part is the bigger part and the 
smaller part is known as the generative cell. However, in plants such as cereals, the male gametes form while the pollen is still within the, in these cases, where pollen is shed at two cell stage, the generative cell divides after pollen has landed on the stigma. The last point says that the cytoplasm of the generative cell does not contain much of the stored food material. Basically, the vegetative cell is having more stock of the food materials and the generative cell, you can see, look over here, it's having very less food material. Fat, starch, protein, granules are present in the vegetative cell. In your NCRT book, there's a line given that the vegetative cell is bigger. Okay, let me mark it for you. The vegetative cell is bigger, has abundant food reserve and a large irregular shaped nucleus. So you can look over here that it is having an irregular nucleus. Understood? And in case of generative cell, it is small and floats in the cytoplasm. It is spindle shaped with dense cytoplasm and nucleus. So here the generative cell is cytoplasm is very dense and very concentrated and it will spindle shaped. So you will see this diagram, this part is generative cell ka, that is spindle shaped. In over 60% of the angiosperms, pollen grains are shed at two-celled stage. So this cell is two-celled stage, here you will see all pollen grains shed. But the remaining species are the generative cell is divided mitotically and it becomes a three-celled stage. Now we are talking about pollen grains ke kuch economical uses, importance and its viability. Ke bare mein. So talking about the pollen products, two types of pollen products are widely used. Hote hai, pollen fruit supplements and pollen grains. So pollen grains contain abundant carbohydrate and unsaturated fat. They are used in the form of tablets, syrups for enhancing vital body functions, Pollen consumption increases the performance and used by athletes and are given to race horses. So basically, vital body functions ko ye bahut zada enhance karta hai. Aap NCRT book mein dekho ge. Yaan kuch pictures bane hai. Natural bee collected pollen in tiny golden pots. So ye sab tablets use karte hai. Athletics log ko aur horses log ko diya jata taaki wo log ka performance better ho paaye. Talking about pollen creams, pollen green protect themselves from UV rays. So they are used in creams, emulsions for providing smoothness and protection to skin. So there are many cosmetics that you can use. So if you are giving UV protection, then it can be a pollen cream. If you talk about pollen viability, ke bare mein aate, to pollen viability ka matlab hai, the time or the period for which pollen grains remain viable or functionally is called pollen viability. That means pollen ka ek validity you can say. So it depends upon the temperature and humidity. Pollen grain remain viable for 30 minutes. So through the help of cryopreservation, pollen grains can be stored in liquid nitrogen and used as pollen bank. In our NCRT, it is possible to store pollen grains of a large number of species for years in liquid nitrogen. The temperature will minus 196 degrees centigrade. So this type of preservation is called cryopreservation. It's written over here. Let me mark it down. Cryo preservation, cryo preserved in liquid nitrogen. Pollen allergy. Ke baare mein agar mein baat karu, to pollen grain produces several allergy. It causes fever and common respiratory disorders as asthma or bronchitis. Carrot grass or parthenium hysterophorus is also a major source of pollen allergy. So it also causes harm to the internal body organs. It was introduced in India along with imported wheat. So till here we studied everything in detail about your pollen grains and in the next video we'll be studying about the megasporogenesis and the female part of the flower if you like the video please don't forget to subscribe thank you so much